Correct, Chair Dog. Is that where uh, we're talking to you from? That's right, man. I'm I'm safe and sound in my witness relocation program. <laughs> so Ames, Iowa, isn't that the home of uh, Iowa State University? That is that's correct. You know, um, that's why I like to say Ames stands for a holes making everything a social issue. Okay. Uh, my, my wife went to uh, Iowa State, so. <laughs> <laughs> what did she study? Um, social work. Yeah, social issues. Yeah, you know. Jared, Jared Dog, uh, the mighty Jared Dog, he is the bar comedian, and he is uh, headlining a uh, great night of comedy a week from Saturday. Check out the new Lons Tailgaters in Stoughton. They're located on Main Street. Formerly the uh, old Sonny's Bar and Grill. It's now under new ownership. They've remodeled that place. It is awesome. Lon's Tailgaters. And uh, Jared Dog's going to be there on uh, the 23rd. And I have, uh, I've seen this guy do his thing. Remember the, the compound a while back where you just riffed for like 90 minutes completely off the cuff? That was, a, that was kind of an eye-opening experience for me as somebody that was new to comedy. That was awesome, man. Uh, well, yeah, thanks, dude. You know, I was, I think I was just going and operating off of an adrenaline high. I was so freaked out about possibly being raided. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention everything else that was going on that night. You know, uh, it's the first time I'd ever done a comedy show where two things had happened. There was two firsts for me in one show. First, number one, is that they had porno playing on the big screen at the other end of the bar that I got to watch almost yep. the entire time I was on stage. Hey, uh, that was not it was, so that, <clears throat> that didn't exactly make it easy to concentrate. And first, number two, was having a guy in the front row literally pee his pants. Oh, the butt man. Show. Yeah. Yeah, I do recall that. Wait, you didn't share that with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, is, is that something that you put on your your uh, like your website? Is that like it's so funny? He literally made a guy pee his pants. Yeah, yeah. The clip is on. I put it up on Facebook, and it's on YouTube as well. So you could, if you just go on YouTube, and I'm I'm pretty sure this has happened to other comedians as well. I, there's got to be more than just my clip up there. But if you Google or YouTube, Heckler pees his pants during comedy show. It should come up. Okay, well, well it's definitely worth the watch. I, I, I saw it in real time, but I still think I might watch that video. I know what I'm doing with my Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll kill, that'll, you know, that'll occupy your time for a good two minutes. But, Paul, I got to say, man, I'm excited to be working with you too, dude, because you were funny as hell. Usually, like, listen, no offense, but a lot of times these local radio guys get up and they think that doing stand-up comedy is just as easy as it is getting on the air. And in this, in this particular case, you actually have a live audience. It's not like like just going into the studio and saying whatever you want and thinking that you're hilarious, which a lot of morning radio DJs do. You actually got up there and you had like legitimate stand-up comedy material. I was impressed, man. How long have you been doing stand-up? Not very long. Uh, I think that was my, my second or third time. I remember your first time, man. You were white as a goat. Yeah, I, was, I was pretty <laughs> nervous for that first time. Oh, dude, oh. you... You were tight, man. You had your material worked out. It was solid. Everything hit. It was on point. I was like, holy. Well, I, almost, I was like, this guy's good. Well, thank you. And I, I want to ask you because I was, uh, I was wondering. So there was a, I was the opener for Jared Dog, and then there was the, the opener for me, who did not fare that well. <laughs> now, as, as a comedian, is it better to follow somebody that bombs because you can only be better, or is it worse? Because then the crowd's already kind of set up, like they're already in non-laughing mode. Right. Well, as a as a professional, would you rather follow somebody that kills or bombs? What's what's easier to work with, crowd wise? You know, that's a good question. Um, I think it's easier to follow somebody who kills, and. But that's not to say following somebody who bombs is that challenging either. Right. The, the challenge there for people who bomb is that a lot of times in this day and age, especially audiences are rude now. They'll just get up and leave. So if there's a now this didn't necessarily happen at the compound and and everybody was into the bud man he was he he tanked but he was funny as hell while he was tanking 
you know, and I turned it in. And if you noticed that particular night, I turned it in to material for later. Absolutely. Night. Yes. That was uh, the so best thing that uh, happened to you that night, man, wasn't it? The Bud Man showing up. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's what, what happened. And that's the guy, that was the guy that peed his pants, you yeah. know? And, yeah. um, and I think he's subsequently been banned from the compound. <laughs> I think there might have been some rehab as well. Uh, it's a very dark story if you do the follow-up on the Bud Man, but we uh, won't go there. No, it's cool. Yeah, but when, when, when there's someone on stage that's going on before you and they're bombing and people are starting to walk out of the room, I think that's actually tougher to recover from. Now, I will also say this. It doesn't matter who goes on before you. If you're a true headliner, you should be able to follow anything that was right. up before you. Well, I know you've pretty much been everywhere, um, so you've probably seen just about everything. Does anything like stand out to you in your years? How many years have you been in the game now, Jared Dog? I started in 1995, so 23 years now. You think I'd be a hell of a lot further in my career than doing Schultz's compound? <laughs> What's the? Is there one thing that stands out? Is there like a, the, the crazy point of your your career or anything that that really stands out? Well, or you not? Know, is it just like a blur of incidents? It, it's it is one big blur. That that's for sure. But I will say it is definitely always an adventure it's like an odyssey of the mind dude you know traveling around the country you never know who you're going to meet you never know what you're going to get yourself into you never know what the situation is going to be when you're doing comedy you never know what the audience is going to be like you, you know it's like the show that you're at prime example nine min, 90 minutes of me just riffing with the crowd there was material in there that i'd done before but most of that was just simply reacting to the craziness that was happening that night. And that has actually become my favorite part of doing stand-up comedy is the uh, unpredictable nature of it. The only thing I expect is expect the unexpected. Absolutely. You know? is, is, it a, is it harder to do comedy nowadays, though, where everybody gets so butthurt about anything? No, I think that makes it easy. I get this question a lot. I think that makes it easier. I've been talking about this on my Facebook Live video, the 420 Report, uh, this last week. Uh, I think right now what is making comedy the most challenging is smartphones. People sitting on their phone, scrolling on Facebook, or tweeting out, or taking selfies, or doing whatever it is they're doing. Where they're just sitting there scrolling. It's the new channel surfing, and they're not actually watching the show. Why would you pay your $10 or your $15 or whatever the cover charge is to sit there and deliberately not enjoy the show because you're looking at your the the freaking phone in your hand uh what i think pc has done for comedy actually if you do it right is it gives you something to make fun of it gives you something to mock it gives you something to rebel against anybody who's sensitive no matter where they are on the political spectrum is easy to make fun of it's easy to come up with the material most people don't give a rat's ass about political correctness they're at a comedy show to have a good time so if i can get that crowd going against all the sensitive snowflakes out there they're going to get butt hurt if you say this that or the other and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the topic is you know you could be it could be it could be it, wh people just want to complain it's the complaint culture and i have zero tolerance for that i will not cater my comedy to complainers well i'm pretty sure ryan and lon and the whole crew they're not going to give you a, a list of uh guy a list of things that are uh you know <laughs> off limits for the uh the show at uh, lon's tailgater so I'm guessing that you're going to have the perfect crowd for that show, uh, Jared Dog. And tickets are on sale now right at the bar. So stop into uh, Lon's Tailgaters on Main Street in Stoughton. Pick them up. They're only 7 bucks in advance, which is ridiculously cheap. Uh, $10 at the door if there's any available. They're also going to have great drink specials during the show like Dollar Taps. And uh, I know there will be some shot specials as well. So, Jared Dog, you mentioned the uh, 420 report. That's pretty. That's a pretty cool new feature you uh, incorporated about a year ago. Uh, how can people get in on that? Just like you on Facebook? Yeah, man. Just go to Facebook. You can like me. My fan page is at the Bar Comic, um, but I do the the 420 report live from my personal feed which you're going to have to look up Jeremy Danley. Facebook won't let me use Jerdog for some reason anymore. It's a social network. Paul, explain this to me. 
it's a so like I'm saying, explain this to me. Like somehow you've got the inside track on Facebook. <laughs> Jared dog is the name that I'm known as socially and a social network. Won't let me use that name. I don't understand it. And you had it, right? You were Jared dog. And then they told you, Oh, we can't allow this anymore. For right? 10 years. I, be, I Okay, listen, in 2008, I didn't even want to be on Facebook, but uh, somebody said I had to go on there in order to stay in touch with whatever the event was that they were promoting. They're like, all the details are going to be on Facebook. And it was a friend of mine, so I wanted to make sure that I was at the event. I get on Facebook. I sign up as Jeremy Jaredog Danley. I've been Jeremy Jaredog Danley on Facebook for 10 years, 10 years. Then somebody reported me. That's that little PC culture you're talking about <laughs> where now if people can't get you, they can't censor what you do or what you say, they'll report you for some other dumb community violation. So yeah. now if, if you're going to look me up on Facebook, you got to be, you got to look up Jeremy Danley. I stopped going by Jeremy Danley because nobody could remember it, dude. When I first started doing stand up comedy, I would, uh, give the MC my introduction and they'd always bring me up as Jiminy Delaney, <laughs> Jerry Danielson. It's like clearly written on a piece of paper and they can't read it. Like they can't read it. Yeah. It's still it's, it's through the mountains of coke. It's back to those uh, morning radio announcers. We're not all that gifted. <laughs> sir, we can't really do that much. So, uh, <laughs> hey, you know what, man? I'd, I'd love to get you on the show uh, more regularly. So I know you're uh, in the Midwest, in Wisconsin a lot too. Maybe we'll have to make this like a monthly little uh, discussion if you're down with that. I would love to do that, dude. We could call it Wake and Bake. We there you go. <laughs> I like that, keeping with your 420 theme. Good morning. Well, uh, I'm very much looking forward to you uh, bringing the comedy back uh, to the area. Jared Dog, again, uh, J uh, June 23rd, that's a week from Saturday. He is headlining at Lon's Tailgaters in Stoughton. Get your tickets now while they last, right there at the bar located on Main Street in Stoughton. Hey, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Looking forward to the show. Yeah, likewise, man. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for calling me back. I'm glad we were able to make this happen. You can also go to my website, which is just jaredogcomedy.com, and that's got all my social media on there. You can check that out. And uh, as well as I'm giving away free copies of my CD, Totally Baked. If you go to barcomic.com, barcomic.com, you can get a free copy of my CD. Awesome, and uh, we are going to be giving away tickets to the show uh, next week, so be listening for that. Uh, thanks again to Jared Dog. Let's play some music right now. How about that? As we have the uh, morning buzz on the way next here on the hog. Jared Dog, thank you, buddy. That was awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was fun, man. Thanks for calling me back. I'm glad we can make it happen. I'll Absolutely. I'll be in touch, all right? All right, dude. I'll see you Saturday. Saturday. Yep. Yeah.